During the latter years of the colonial era, connections between the nations of British Central Africa were formed through the creation of the East African Airways Corporation, or EAA, a carrier operated jointly by the governments of Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda, which provided both domestic links but also international routes to Europe and the UK, only for deteriorating political tensions between the three nations to result in the airline's collapse in the late 1970s. EAA traces its roots back to July 31, 1929, when a private airline was established called Wilson Airways, the carrier taking its name from the company founder Florence Kerr Wilson, an early female aviation pioneer who, earlier that year, had performed a flight from Langata Airstrip near Nairobi, Kenya to England using a Fokker Universal in the company of Tom Campbell Black and Archie Watkins, her £50,000 prize money being invested into the formation of the airline and purchase of its first aircraft, a de Havilland DH-60 Gypsy Moth, Wilson's vision being to develop air transport across East Africa. As there were only three airstrips in existence across the whole of the Kenya colony, the initial work of Wilson Airways was primarily charter services, providing mail and transportation to upcountry settlements, while also spotting herds of lions and elephants for hunting safaris. But after 1930, Wilson, with the help of her pilot, Captain M.C.P. Mostert, began to pioneer further airlinks across East Africa, undertaking a route survey between Nairobi and Johannesburg, followed the next year by the first formal transcontinental service between the island of Zanzibar off the east coast of Tanzania to Dakar in the colony of French Senegal via the Belgian Congo, and by 1932 the carrier was providing connections for Imperial Airways between Nairobi, Mombasa, Zanzibar and Dar es Salaam. With expansions to the airline's routes, more aircraft were purchased, and further airmail services were introduced between Nairobi, Dar es Salaam and Kampala, and by the outbreak of World War II in 1939, the company operated 15 aircraft, including DH-89 Dragon Rapides and Percival Vega Gulls, all of which were pressed into service with the Kenyan Auxiliary Air Unit, or KAAU, and the airline was liquidated in 1940. East African Airways was formed by committee recommendation in 1943, and was to be a single authority for air transport, responsible to the governments of Kenya, Uganda, Tanganyika and Zanzibar, all of which were British colonies the airline being formally incorporated on October 30th, 1945, and utilised an initial batch of six XRAF DH-89A Dominis, which had been previously registered to BOAC, and within the first years of EAA's operations, the DH-89As were flown on 21 services a week, serving Nairobi, Mombasa, Tanga, Zanzibar, Dar es Salaam, Lindi, Morogoro, Nduli, Southern Highlands, Chunya, Mbea, Moshi, Kisumu, Eldorot, Kitale and Entebbe accumulating a total mileage of 587,073, with 9,404 passengers flown, but with a deficit of £25,483, or £1.1 million in 2021. By 1947, the number of passengers rose to 13,500, and the annual deficit reduced to £19,617, by which time, in the face of a review of the airline services, EAA requested that its more uneconomic routes, such as Nairobi to Katale via Eldoret, Dar al Salaam to Kasami via Mbeya, and Nairobi to Dar al Salaam via Mwanza, which together amounted to almost the entire corporate deficit, be subsidised jointly by the government supporting the carrier, a request which was eventually authorised. In 1948, EAA purchased five Lockheed Lodestars from BOAC at a cost of £6,000 each, these aircraft, having previously operated BOAC's Empire routes to the Middle East, being perfect for EAA's operations, as they had been retrofitted with specialised Wright Cyclone engines that were well suited to the hot and high operations of airports like Nairobi, the Lodestars being a significant step forward for the carrier, as their 200 mile an hour cruising speeds reduced the flight time from Nairobi to Dar es Salaam, from 4 hours 40 minutes to 2 hours 30. Traffic continued to grow steadily throughout 1949, supported by the purchase of several ex-military Douglas C-47 Dakotas, followed in 1950 by the start of regular services to South Africa. The Dakotas, which demonstrated a greater robustness than the Lodestars, soon being an instrumental part of the company's operations into Nyazaland, now Malawi, and southern Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, as well as taking over on the South African routes, replacing the company's fleet of 15 Lodestars by February 1953. In February 1952, East African Airways became the first commercial airline to carry a reigning British monarch, as following the death of King George VI, Princess Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh, who were in Kenya as part of their royal tour, had to be abruptly returned to Great Britain, and therefore flew aboard EAA Dakota Victor Papa Kilo Hotel Kilo, piloted by Wing Commander A.M. Frankham, from Nanyuki to Entebbe, whereupon they boarded a BOAC Argonaut bound for London. 
1953 proved to be an eventful year for EAA, as the company briefly introduced Machi MB320 twin-engined airliners, but these were quickly sold after a series of poor weldings caused oil pipes in the engines to burst, one such event taking place on the delivery flight. While that same year, the Kenyan government considered the introduction of shorter tours of duty for government officials, using air transport for leave passengers, and accordingly requested EAA to examine the possibility of providing a service to the UK at a lower fare than BOAC and South African Airways, eventually drafting an agreement with BOAC under which the government leave traffic would be shared between EAA and BOAC on an equal basis, leading to the lease and subsequent purchase of BOAC C4 Argonauts, despite these aircraft being ill-suited for the company's unique working conditions. While EAA was forced to endure the aging Argonauts, they did allow the opening of new twice-weekly services to India and Pakistan via the colony of Aden, as well as improving the service frequency on flights to London, Johannesburg, Lusaka in northern Rhodesia, and Salisbury in southern Rhodesia to weekly. But the airliners were considered more stopgaps until 1958, when EAA placed an order for a clutch of de Havilland Comet 4s that would ably compete with BOAC on the international routes to Europe, the Argonauts being replaced by leased Bristol Britannia 300s from BOAC and British United during the same year as an interim measure before the delivery of the Comets. In July and September 1960, the first two Comets arrived and brought EAA into the jet age, and with their entry into service, the operating profit for the firm jumped from £40,000 in 1959 to £460,683 in 1960, allowing the carrier to both establish a wholly owned non-IATA subsidy called Seychelles Kilimanjaro Air Transport, or SCAT, which operated non-profitable services between Zanzibar, Tanga, Dar es Salaam and Pemba, and also sign a pool agreement between itself, BOAC, Central African Airways or CAA of Rhodesia, and South African Airways. In July 1961, EAA partook in Operation Vantage, supplying Comets and Argonauts to supplement the RAF's own transport aircraft in order to protect the newly formed state of Kuwait against territorial claims by the neighbouring Iraq, the nation finally being recognised in 1963 while the vast profits created through the Comet fleet meant that not only could a further Comet be bought, which was delivered in April 1962 and allowed for seven flights a week between Nairobi and London via Rome, but also allowed for the replacement of EAA's fleet of sizeable but tired Dakotas by a small fleet of Fokker F-27 friendships later that year. By the mid-1960s though, the mutterings of independence from the colonial powers by the African nations became a roar and in May 1961, the first of the British colonies behind the EAA venture, Tanganyika, broke away from the British Empire, followed by Uganda in 1962, while Kenya achieved internal self-governance in August 1963, before full independence was granted at the end of the year, while also in 1963, out of protest against the apartheid government, operations by South African Airways were banned, although EAA continued to fly twice-weekly Comet and Friendship flights to Johannesburg and Durban until October. With the loss of pool agreements with SAA, new ones were established with BOAC, Air India and Air France, and following the independence of Kenya and Zanzibar in December 1963, the flags of the four nations behind EAA were painted on the tails of the company's aircraft, although Zanzibar's was quickly removed after a revolution in that country during 1964, which, a year later, merged with Tanganyika to form the United Republic of Tanganyika and Zanzibar, later to be renamed Tanzania. In January 1965, a committee was appointed to review the constitutional position of the corporation as a result of the independence won by the four nations instrumental in its operation, and as a consequence of these deliberations, the fleet, which was previously registered to Kenya, was apportioned as equally as possible between the three countries, while BOAC were asked to relinquish their interest in EAA in return for assurances that the £11 million loan made by BOAC in 1959 would be redeemed by the 1967 fiscal year this target being ultimately met by the end of 1966. 1965 also saw discussions as to the replacement of the Comet 4s with a new generation of jet airliner, with the final shortlist comprising the Douglas DC-8, the Boeing 707 and the Vickers Super VC-10, the committee recommending that a fleet of three customised VC-10s be purchased at a cost of £11 million from BAC, these being modified to include a large loading door on the port side that allowed for spacious freight access, and were delivered alongside a new livery that was adopted in October of that year. VC-10s began to enter service with EAA in November 1965, and, alongside a new fleet of de Havilland Canada DHC-6 Twin Otters for subsidiary SCAT, represented a fleet overhaul for the company, Comets being relegated to internal African use as the VC-10s became the new face of the company on its international routes to London, Pakistan and India, 
supported further by the signing of the Treaty for East African Cooperation on December 1, 1967 by Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda as part of the continent's first economic community, resulting in the former common services of airways, railways, harbours and the post office being reconstituted, EAA becoming an institution of the community with a new board of directors appointed. In the post-colonial period, it appeared EAA was going from strength to strength, opening up new corridors from Bombay to Hong Kong, with the intention of extending to Tokyo, and a once-weekly service to Athens, the crown jewel of the airline services being the inauguration of a once-weekly service between Nairobi and New York via Zurich in December 1970, in order to attract possible American tourist traffic to East Africa, complemented by the delivery of a fifth VC-10 and five Douglas DC-9s to replace the Comets on internal African operations. Sadly, the opening of corridors to New York and Hong Kong via Bombay exhibited an overextension of the airline's somewhat limited resources, and following increased losses on each of these routes, both were suspended in July 1971 and never restarted, their problems compounded further by the loss of EAA Flight 720 on April 18, 1972, when VC-10, 5 X-ray Uniform Victor Alpha, during an aborted takeoff from Addis Ababa, overran the runway and crashed into a lighting tower resulting in a post-crash blaze that killed 43 of the 107 passengers and crew aboard. By 1975, the debt of the company truly began to spiral thanks to significant political and economic changes to the nations behind the airline, the most notable being the rise of Ugandan military dictator Idi Amin, who came to power following a bloody coup in January 1971, and through his brutal regime committed untold human rights violations against his people while also opening up political ties with the Soviet Union and other communist nations, rather than relying on the support of the East African community. Meanwhile, Tanzania also struggled economically during the 1970s, as though the nation was strongly supported by the People's Republic of China, who, in exchange for vital natural resources, provided cash injections and helped to build a 1,100-mile railway between Dar es Salaam and the Zambian border, its economic situation deteriorated rapidly in the wake of the 1973 oil crisis, meaning it was unable to maintain financial support for EAA. Fundamentally, the single factor behind the loss of monetary support for EAA by its three partners was due to the airline being essentially a Kenyan operation. As while the carrier's costs were calculated and apportioned accordingly, differences of opinion began to rise as to which nation carried the most expenses with Tanzania and Uganda ultimately disagreeing with the $13 million obligations each government had to finance EAA, resulting in the airline's management being contracted out to Irish flag carrier Aer Lingus in mid-1976, during which time a Boeing 747-100 was introduced to increase capacity on the Nairobi to London service, with further intentions being to sell the company's VC-10s to Kibana and replace them entirely with 747s. Sadly, none of these proposals came to pass as with a debt now passing $120 million, or $513 dollars in 2021, the airline ceased all operations in February 1977, the Kenyan government, by this point, being the only creditor in the company, following Uganda's withdrawal in 1975 as it severed ties with their neighbours, and the inability for Tanzania to continue financing its share of the firm. Uganda's withdrawal from EAA in 1975 resulted in the formation of its own flag carrier in May 1976 with Uganda Airlines, which was created through the absorption of existing assets belonging to the former British United subsidy Uganda Aviation Services, although it wouldn't be until 1979, after Amin had been deposed as dictator of the nation, that the company would acquire its first international airliner in the form of a Boeing 707, Uganda Airlines operating until May 2001, when it was finally liquidated after years of substantial losses. The Kenyan government, meanwhile, established a flag carrier one month prior to the end of EAA, as it became quickly evident that the airline would not survive the deterioration of the East African community, Kenya Airways commencing services on February 4th with Boeing 707s leased from British Midland, so as to provide a seamless transition from East African to Kenyan international operations, Kenya Airways eventually being privatised in April 1995, and continues to operate to 53 destinations in 41 countries. Finally came the establishment of the Air Tanzania Company Limited, or ATCL, in March 1977, which was supported initially by Kenya Airways through the leasing of ex-EAA Douglas DC-9s with financing provided by the Bank of America, but continued to see unreliable and inconsistent service patterns that exacerbated its poor fiscal situation, only improving following a 49% stake in the company being acquired by South African Airways in December 2002, 
Cash injections of up to $40 million and a corporate relaunch of the airline under private ownership taking place in March 2003. Air Tanzania is still operating today solely within the African continent. Overall, East African Airways proved initially to be a huge success during the post-colonial era of Africa and greatly complemented the East African community, although its long-term future was entirely dependent on the continuing political connections of these three nations, the deterioration of which, compounded by an overstretched network to loss-making international destinations, ultimately leading to its inevitable failure.